So if you've ever been to Bibo, Woof, Time Zone, or even, and this is if you've lived in Manila, certain bootleg arcade places, you see people playing one type of game a lot. No, 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 not that. I'm not saying it isn't widespread, but just, just get that ass banned. No, what I'm talking about are the fighting games. Not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. Now what, now what? He's got to be salty after that because he, he had, had him won the previous round. Whoa, he's he is that salty. Wow. Mentos, the fresh maker. It's pretty, it's decently long. Are we gonna get a time? Let's go! Yo, yo, the money! Oh, yo, goddamn! Three twenties, three twenties for doing that combo. But there's one game, one game, everyone here just probably knows. That's right, baby. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. We're gonna talk about Tekken. Bring out the Eddie Gordos and kids who can't lock low because this is Tekken. One thing that sets Tekken apart from other fighting games is one very key thing, its simplicity. As explained here by our good friends at Core A Gaming. Opposite limb for the same attack because its button scheme is laterality based and each button represents each limb. To show you the difference, let's compare Asuka from the 2.5D Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Asuka from Tekken 7. As you can see, the Tekken 7 Asukas have the same orthodox stance, allowing them to use the same right foot for her turning kick. This stance consistency allows you to establish a certain direction to sidestep to dodge certain attacks. Ooh, Ooh fuck yeah, and as you call this, sidestepping to the left on Mishimas will defeat that electric. Please don't sue me. Anyway, that means any one player can, theoretically, go in, mash buttons, and win. These are their stories. Hello, I'm Cedric, and I'm 19 years old. So hi, I'm Shail Waneza. I'm a graduating student taking a Bachelor of Arts in Communication and Media Studies. Um, my name is Vernon Aldodeo, 19. <laughs> Are you sure about this? I'm not saying Oh my god, I can't hold it up for that even. Um, ever since I am fond of playing violent games. <laughs> you say violent and then you see Paul like... Whoa! Rage drive! That thing is so fast. I'm not... I used to play UA, Dead or Alive. Eh? Eh? Oh, Dead, Dead or Alive. Alive. Oh, yeah. 
am He-Man! And then suddenly... <gasps> the pizza He-Man! Eat it! Ah! <laughs> what? <laughs> Shit! What the fuck? <laughs> and there's a satisfaction in winning. And when you can beat your opponent, especially if you don't know them, there's a big satisfaction from that. Fun Crusher, you just got owned. That was the sickest shit. I'm going to... I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. I see. Now, um, maybe we are Maybe we are When when the new generation of characters were yeah, there, I chose Nina. Nina, Nina, Nina. Lars! <laughs> Lars! <laughs> or score. Point is in Lars the Bob. Lars the Bob. As you can see, not a very hard game, in theory. But then we get to the higher levels and. Set point. Everyone at the edge of their seats. Oh, get the back! Right in the doggy door, gonna carry to the wall. Uh uh, knees, all of them. Uh uh, oh, jeez, Half Life already got. Oh, the oh. Jet Arbor! Oh, oh yeah. let's get it! Okay. Di all right. Uh, uh, here. So much different. Unbelievable! Uh uh, knees, give them to me. The uh, crowd. Uh. Listen to the crowd here. Oh! Uh. Get up! Oh, oh, Jesus. Everybody shut the fuck up uh, out uh, there! <laughs> Ding! Oh, oh my god! The oh my god! It's Anything's gonna do it! Wild Ride the 3-4 race drive! Oh, oh my no! God. Oh my god! It's your oh. ding! And it's because this game is at once the simplest thing to play at surface level, and the hardest thing to pull off at the highest levels of play. Don't believe me? Let's look at some basic tech and tech. When you first start off, you're both zero, right? The best way to think of it is if I throw out my arm and I do a jab and you block, I'm safe. But if I do a move, maybe like I've done a, a hook and I'm minus 10, that means you can do a move that is 10 frames. So the speed of 10 frames is what can react to a move that is minus 10. Right, so if Kazuya does 1-1-2 one, one, and I block it, he will be minus 17. That means I could do any move under 17 frames. How do you crouch cancel? Uh, it's kind of complicated. When you're in crouch and you hit up, you go immediately from crouch into standing, which means you're bypassing while standing moves. What you're trying to avoid here is you're trying to avoid getting a while standing move because this move ends in crouch. This move ends in crouch. So if you hit a button right afterwards, you're in crouch, which means you're gonna do a wall standing move. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the elusive Korean backdashing on the one player side. Um, normally, I rest the Japanese ball top right in this area of my hand. The method you would have to use is back back, down back, and then neutral. You use your thumb to hold back, then you slide it to down back with your index finger, and then neutral. In today's video, we're gonna talk about Korean backdash on the two player side. What you want to do is you want to hit back again, put the ball top. This is what I do at least. Use that portion to hit back and then use the kind of your index and middle finger to slide to down back and then neutral. You're going to want to do this kind of uh, circular motion. And that's the thing about Tekken. That's the key. Anyone can pick it up and play. A new guy can play it and still win against people in the middle tiers of skill. But then they lose and it's okay. 
Daijobu, it's fine. It's a game that's easy to learn, but hard to master. Is every round gonna come down to like five? Oh, seconds? there's a life lead, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna run? Oh, wow! So good. Oh, judo chop, right? He's gonna get the, the wall, too, that might be it. Oh, what a punish. Get off of me, dude! Go for the throw. Oh! And it is because of this that the game survived for so long. This, despite being literally one of the very first of the 3D fighting games to ever come out, it's still here. I say this, however, knowing that Tekken isn't in a good place currently, but it's got new mechanics and everything I hear you say. And you're right. Power Crush moves are a new addition to Tekken 7. These are made to provide an additional option which combines offense and defense by absorbing incoming strikes. Similar to the super armor moves possessed by characters like Sentinel or Hulk in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Power Crush moves will absorb high and mid moves at 100% of those moves base damage. They will not absorb low hits. And throws which connect during the Power Crush will be unbreakable. Rage Arts are another addition to Tekken 7. They require Rage, a special mode which activates when a character's health is below 25%, or when you have 42 points or less of the 170 point health bar. And performing them causes a cinematic series of attacks if they connect. Rage Arts do more damage with the less health you have. They also absorb strikes, like Power Crushes, but without the same weaknesses. However, they are a one-shot move per round, and are normally very punishable. Again, while Blasted Salami isn't wrong in that, yes, there are new things in Tekken, there are... well... Tekken 7 is kind of annoying in that sense where they took out a good chunk of the legacy characters, but... There's not, not much complaint, except for a few, um, like, my friends who really want to play, like, Lei. Lei Wulong. Lei Wulong. Lei Wulong, definitely. I mean, it, it's... Every, everyone's bitching about Lei Wulong coming back. Long. We've gathered here for your private funeral. The public has no idea you're gone, so you can rest in peace. Is Harada coming? Matsuda. <laughs> what do you think of that? Play Wulong. This is my perfect victory! That's right! I win! The things that stuck with people all of those years ago is now gone. Gone as half the cast, with notable absences being in the form of Marduk, Julia, Anna, Armorking, and Blay. But I also would like to see uh, Wang, uh, Beck, Bruce, I'm... Yeah, to be fair on Harada, however, Alex and Roger, they, they won't be missed. But then you realize the bears won't be missed too, and yet they're still here. Hell, one new character, Josie Rizal, plays exactly like Bruce, leading fans to speculate some really strange theories. Um, Bruce, which is basically Josie, but you know, it's still Bruce. It's still Bruce. It's sad, but you know. We still have Bruce though. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Arctic assault! Arctic assault! I love the way you play Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Not just that, but the 
DLC is questionable. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? I make it sound really, really bad, and to me, it is, obviously, but what of the rest of the Philippines? Well... Even on life right now. Oh, oh that big launch! Not gonna kill, but this is dangerous. Drops the combo goes low. That's it! That's it! Kana Kana sent the loser! By the most relaxed player in all the Philippines right here. Good day, uh, I'm John from uh, Iloilo Tekken League, uh, one of the organizers for the Unicorn Tekken 7 uh, tournament. My name is Alex, I'm one of the member. I'm a member of the Iloilo Tekken League and I'm also one of the organizers for, for its tournaments. In 2013, uh, the Tekken scene in Iloilo uh, is kind of uh, stagnant and dying. So we don't have any uh, arcade scenes or game spot to play with. So I decided uh, to consult my friends and other players if this type of tournament will be uh, feasible enough to uh, enhance or uh, gather around players and to improve our uh, local community here in Iloilo. We had a Facebook page made uh, in the Second League. It started with about maybe 10 or so members and then we hosted um, the very first ITL tournament season 1 with only 10 players and uh, once we got to season 2 we had about I think 10, 10 players and by season 3 we doubled that n number by so we had 20 and I guess uh, you can say from it was from during the third season that the community started to grow a bit. Tekken has and always will be a thing that matters in the Philippines. It's got the draw, it's got the hype, and with the introduction of the new mechanics, the game is more hype than it has ever been. Oh no! What's happening? Ah! <laughs> AK Wonder Round, AK Wonder Round. But wait. Pairing does it have to us here in Miyagao? I mean, we are virtually in the ass crack of nowhere. Well. So this is the place, this is Grandstand, this is where Company of Wii Bros, the, the place where we got most of our fighting gamers, started from and as you can see right now it's very decrepit and old and kind of dead but I sometimes visit here to try and relive the good old days back when there were still many more of us and we could, uh, we could play games regularly and freely because we were first year back then. Well, as it stands right now, basically the fighting game community in Miyagao is dead. But, as you will see as this documentary goes on, it might not stay that way for long. Let me tell you the story of the fighting game community in Miyago. Back in the day, I didn't know thing one about fighting games. This was before I got to college. But I do appreciate the skill and the talent that goes behind playing a fighting game. Now that is not to say I didn't even try to get good at one, it's just that the fighting games that were there back then, they weren't too fun looking. 
Then I got to college and I met these dudes who were into fighting games and that was the ticket. Um, it, it, it came from like the... After like the Batch Kaya thing, we huddled up to like the creation of a pseudo... pseudo secret um, group called the, the Wii Bros. The Wii Bros Project. Now regarding the OG people who used to play fighting games here in Miyagao, there were only four people. It was me, Lakan, Aiki and JR. Draymond tried to get in every now and then. Jose got me a crack for Skullgirls and tried to get into it, but in essence, these were the only people. There's one more though, his name's Vernon. And he's a coward and he likes cowering away from people. You don't really fight him that much because he doesn't like losing. Here in Miyagawa, it was mostly just us having fun yeah. and us trying to get each other into each other's hobbies. And for now, it's just a couple of friends uh, having fun in front of a laptop, really. They introduced me to things like Guilty Gear, they introduced me to things like Blaze Blue, but they didn't really show me a lot of Blaze Blue because they didn't have it back then. They introduced me to things like uh, Skullgirls. I actually knew about Skullgirls back then, but I just really wanted to know where to get it. These were the games that kind of like marked the first epoch of playing fighting games in Miyagao. Oh. The Skullgirls crack, the, the first one, the, the broken one, god, that, that was... One game that I've been playing for a long time, from casual to trying to get good, was Skullgirls. And every time we load up Skullgirls, it's always a fun and woke time. Woke time, yeah. We weren't even a community back then. We weren't even a community back then. But we did try to get a tournament going. So it was Raymond. He got Mortal Kombat X on his laptop, and he could run it. And while it was not the best fighting game out there, we still decided to try to run it as a tournament. And the opportunity came up in the form of BK Fair. We had everything set up, everything was approved, we had a booth, but come the day, however, it rained, and that would not be much of a problem, except that traditionally BK Fair was always held outside. This nearly destroyed one of our friend's laptops. And so the second part of our, I don't know, our little journey comes. The second era of fighting games in Miyago was the tournament era when we were actually trying to get good. This wasn't because we were just trying to get good. This was because somebody brought to our attention and that somebody was Lakan. There was a tournament going down and what the tournament was for was for Blaze Blue. And so we tried to get good there, but and unfortunately the tournament was never a thing. Well, the tournament never actually pushed through. We did get really good though. It was enough reason for all of us to just kind of try to get good. And get good we did. Uh, over the course of time, we've lost a good chunk of those people who aren't here in Miyagao anymore. The core used to be JR and I. He May you rest in peace. Now, the second era of fighting games was uh, kind of a sad one because it marked the end of the two members of the original core of the fighting game community, that being JR and Aiki. For reasons that are personal and for their grievances of the university, they decided to leave, leaving only me and Lafan. This event was the event that started the third era of fighting games in Yagao. For now, it's just us. UP's population right now is effectively half of what it should be. Now, the third era of fighting games in Miyagao was the period of two dudes, where me and Lahan were just ambling around from game to game. Undernight, we tried, but. Well, there's only so much of the game you can play before you get tired of either the game or the person you're playing with. Then, after that, we decided to pick up Guilty Gear XR Rev 2. The update with the character Biken, who I think was hot. But still, we played that for a bit. I got good at, at Biken, but uh, we eventually decided to drop that as well because the second verse is same as the first. Like, one of us got sick of either the other or the game itself. The last game and the most important game of this era was Blaze Blue for Central Fiction because that was the game we technically played the most but it was all in one city and the third verse is same as the second verse which is same as the first. We got tired of it because wouldn't you get tired after playing a dude for like 70 matches? Uh, 
And so we come to the last part of this uh, little recap of living of a media community. And yes, it is as sad as you think. The last chapter involved just uh, me and Lahan. That all changed one day, however, and because of context, we've just been playing with the both of us, and uh, it's been very sad. So that all changed one day when my friend came up to me, my friend being Lahan, and said that he downloaded a new game. I asked him what that game was, and you know what he showed me? Ow. He showed me this. We were desperate to get new people to play with us, but we didn't exactly have an answer. That is, until we got to this 2018's Nigatsu Cafe, where me and Lakan, after absconding from our duties temporarily, went to Bibo, and while we were there, he played Tekken. And though I really had no history of liking Tekken before because it looked like such a boring game, I saw the character he was playing and I saw how wild, erratic, and fun the movement was that I just decided that maybe I would like to give this game a chance. Two or three weeks after, he got the game. It is unfortunate that the character I started wanting to play the game for isn't there, but it's still a pretty solid game despite all of the grievances I've laid out earlier. It's still really good. It was so good that it kind of sort of revitalized the fighting game community. When we launched Tekken back then on some side, we, we, got, we, we really got a few players to, got to play in. I'm still hoping that next semester with like the freshies, uh, they'll bring Geyer to which, which would help, I guess, this growing community. I wouldn't say it really has started yet. I still think it's uh, in its infant stage since it's mostly just us dudes and a bunch of uh, other people who uh, show, up from, to show up from time to time playing. Where it was once just me and Lakan, Raymond threw his hat in. After Raymond, there was Jose. We got Kyle. Throughout all of that, more people kept adding on. But there was one person in the pile that I did not expect at all. It was Jude. To be honest, I'm not really a uh, fighting game type of person. I'm more of an FPS type of person. But I get like it's like a mentality of like not backing down. He is traditionally not a fighting gamer. He's the newest, but he's already part of the core. And he runs Eliza. But the thing is, he only started playing because he thought one character there looked really cute. Which you know I guess is alright, so long as they play the game. Oh uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's really nice, that's really nice. So, now we're at the end of this documentary and you're wondering what this thing was. Well, it was a story of a community, it was the story of a bunch of people getting together because of Tekken 7. A community that used to be just a handful of dudes is now slightly bigger and I think that made uh, that matters a lot that I think that difference is really key I hope you guys find something that binds you together the same way as that because having a community to rely on having a community to fall back on people to hang out with homies as it were yeah homies that's the word is a really nice thing and though you may not always be together because, let's face it, if you're united by a thing like, say, Tekken, you, you guys are basically beating each other over and over and over again to assert dominance. I think that matters very little. So long as you guys can just make peace by the end of it. And I think that's, that's what they do in Aman. And that's a really beautiful thing about the fighting game community. I hope you guys find something like that too. Well, I have to go and run now. Uh, I'm still going to edit this video. And I'm here uh, concluding it in BK Hut. Hope you guys have fun.